Hey y'all, welcome to Haruzard Comedy Plus Gaming. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to be showing you some tips and techniques from the realm of improv that you can use in your stream to engage your audience and create clippable, shareable, and interesting content, even if nobody's watching. Quick plug, I stream every Monday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. On the weekdays, I stream at 7 p.m. Central Time. Weekends, I stream at 1 p.m. Central Time, playing things like Red Dead Online or Sea of Thieves, doing some improv comedy role play there. So if you want to see some of these techniques I'm talking about implemented in a live stream, go ahead. The links are in the description below to my Twitch and Facebook gaming platforms there. I also stream sometimes to YouTube as well, so hit that subscribe button, that bell notification. Make sure you get notified the next time one of these videos comes up. For the past 10 years, I've been a professional writer, comedian, improviser, actor, MC, content creator, video editor. Since COVID-19 hit, I haven't been able to perform since March. So I wanted to take my passion for gaming and video production, put them together and create a live stream channel. So I've only been doing it for a couple of months and I have a very low to modest followership, but I've learned a lot from the streaming community. So I wanted to pay you all back and give you a couple of different tips and tricks that you can use on your stream if you're just starting out or starting to get a larger audience or you've been going for a long time and you just wanna shake things up a little bit and give your audience a little bit of different content than what you might see on a typical Twitch stream. After that lengthy intro, let's get into the first episode of my Improv for Streamer series, Keeping the Focus. In this video, we're gonna go over some tried and true improv techniques that you can use to keep yourself talking on stream, engage that stream of consciousness muscle, and engage with your audience even if they aren't being super chatty in the chat, chat, chatty, chat, chat. I said chat a lot. I said it too many times now. Chat, okay, won't chat. This is an easy concept to grasp, but a difficult one to execute. So what does it mean? Follow the shiny thing. Well. What we are trying to teach here is for you to look out for the most interesting thing, take it and expand upon it. So let's say if you're, if you're playing a show to a crowd, it's much easier to find the most popular shiny thing. If my scene partner in a set says something like, I'm a raccoon farmer and the audience laughs or has like a what the hell does that mean reaction, then we found our shiny thing. Now, how do you extrapolate upon it? Well, I might ask questions like, what does that mean? What is a raccoon farm? Or what, what kind of produce do raccoons create? How much money do you make? See, these are simple questions that we can ask to extrapolate upon, follow that shiny thing, and turn it into something interesting, meaningful, something that our audience can engage with. So what's a practical example of this for your stream? Let's say you're playing Call of Duty and somebody keeps killing you with a throwing knife. Well, the typical response is gonna be you get mad and scream and shout, call them a hacker. There's thousands of Twitch streamers doing that every single second. So make yourself different, make yourself stand out. Maybe create a fictional reason as to why they're killing you so much with just the throwing knife. Maybe they are a ghost and in order to pass over to the other side, they have to kill you 20 times with just the throwing knife. Or maybe you can sympathize with them because they can't even afford a gun. They came with nothing but their wits, wills, and their knives and they're making something of themselves. The point is, make it different, make it unique. Quick disclaimer on all of this, if you've never taken a class in, in the art, know that none of this is fact. What I'm telling you right now, these are all different opinions and tools that I have used and I've learned from other people that I'm giving you now to see if you want to use them. So treat that as such, treat it as a tool that you might put in your tool belt. There is no right or wrong way to make art or create content. It's all up to you and what you wanna do at the end of the day. The second part of keeping the focus is callbacks. Now a callback is taking a theme or a focal point or even just a small little joke that came up earlier in the show and re-implementing it and reintroducing it in a different, more interesting way later on in the show. For this, I actually have an example a clip from one of my recent live streams with my fellow improv buddy, Coulter, when we were playing Red Dead Online. Yeah, I got horse insurance. <laughs> You know, Weston, I'm going to tell you, they, they might try to upsell you on some horse insurance, but I, it's worth it. So in the chat, when I was selecting my horse, there was a discussion that started regarding horse insurance. And then we started talking about what the reality of having horse insurance would mean. And then later on in the stream, about an hour or so later, this happened. Okay, I'm starting. You know, he said there, oh, there was money. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, what the hell? That's, That's how you don't 
I'm so, so sorry. sorry. Hey, yeah, hey, well, bro. you watch it. it. Hey, Don't walk Les, away from me. Just show me your horse here. insurance card. Show me your horse <laughs> insurance card right now. Since we were able to identify the shiny thing from earlier on in the stream, something that our chat audience reacted to when the opportunity arose, we took it. So the important thing here is context. Because not only did the viewers who had been watching the stream since the initial horse insurance card conversation in the chat immediately understand what we were doing, but if somebody was just jumping into the stream at that moment, they were interested and hooked because they could see that there was some context behind what we were doing based on the chat's reaction and our reaction as players. And even further along in the stream, we still utilize this same callback to bring the audience back into the chat, get them engaged again. Hey, Wes. You know, you know I always got your back, right? But we can't be getting into horse wrecks. Our our horse insurance premiums are gonna go up. If if anybody gets wind of that, so you know I want to report things, file a claim when we can. But it's also gonna increase our premiums as well. So this is something I like to call an out. So that's for if things get stale. It's something that you know. It's something that your audience knows. It's something that you've created with them so that you can re-engage them, get them back in the chat and talking with you again to go off in another direction and keep them with you. Callbacks are a great way to increase your retention with your viewers because you're creating inside jokes with them using the context of the things that happened before in your stream. And when new viewers come in, they're going to see the chat reacting to those outs that you've created and they're gonna wanna be a part of it. And that's the most important part of this video. The reason why anybody watches anything ever is because they wanna feel like they are part of something. The reason somebody goes to a concert or attends a play, goes to a comedy show or watches a live stream because they want to be a part of something. So using a few of these tips to engage your audience a little bit more, creating a space where you're allowing them to be a part of it is going to bring them back. That's why people follow certain Twitch streamers or Facebook gamers or YouTube content creators is because they're creating a place where a person feels like they're part of something unique. They are in on it. They have the inside joke. They know the person. They understand the content. They're proud of themselves when they know about the context of either a joke you're bringing back up or a conversation that maybe you had earlier in the stream or in a previous stream. If they're able to re-engage because you're keeping those those things inside your brain that you can bring back out, those outs for when things get stale and keep your audience following you engaged and feeling like they're part of something. Because that's why we're all here. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is the first episode in my Improv for Streamers series. I'm gonna release 10 episodes covering different topics and release a new one every single week right here on my channel. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification to let you know uh, when the video goes live. And also uh, pop into the comments if you have any questions. If anything I covered in the video today doesn't make sense or doesn't click, let me know in the comments and I'd love to chat with you about it. If you have specific goals for your channel or the type of content that you wanna create, make sure drop them in the comments as well because um, I have the first couple of videos mapped out already for this series, but I, I'm still working on the last few. So if there's anything that I can add in there that can help the people who are watching these videos, uh, that would be preferred. So let me know if there's any specific thing that you wanna work on to be a better content creator and be a better streamer. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for stopping by. Until next time, just remember, nothing matters until you make it matter.